Good afternoon. Welcome to The Knit Shift, episode 64. My name is Lara, and today is Sunday, August 7th, 2016. Thank you so much for checking out my podcast today, whether you have spent time with me before or if you are checking me out for the first time. I hope you like what you what you see. I'm a journalist in Southeast Virginia. I live with my boyfriend and my dog and a lot of yarn. So I hope you have a good time with me today. Show notes can be found at theknitshift.com. This episode is available on YouTube and iTunes and will be embedded at theknitshift.com. I am on Instagram as Laura Mahalski and I'm on Ravelry as Yarnstormer. And I would love it if you joined our group for the podcast over on Ravelry. If you search for The Knit Shift, you will find us. So, how have you guys been? I hope you've had a fantastic week. It's hot and sunny here as usual. I don't know about you, but I am so ready for fall to be here. I think this is the week I just feel like I'm totally done with summer. I just would rather be cold and cozy in my knits than sitting in the air conditioning to escape the heat. That being said, I am going to Texas in a little bit. So my recording schedule for the next couple weeks will be a little bit weird. Um, I don't know if I'll have an episode next week, but I hope to have a something up for you guys after this episode and before I go to Texas. Um, It might be a sort of mini episode where I talk about my plans for travel knitting because as any of you know, if you are going anywhere for any length of time, most for most of us, the first thing we do is we think about what knitting we're going to bring. We don't even think about the clothes or the, you know, the necessities, clean underwear. It's all about the knitting. And I feel like for many of us, we always go overboard. It's like, okay, I'm going to be gone for two nights, so I definitely need four knitting projects. That makes all of the sense in the world. I'm going to be gone like almost a week, so I feel like I can't justify bringing seven or eight knitting projects with me, but I think I will bring four or five. Hopefully I have an episode for you guys next week about that. And of course, um, when I'm in Texas, I will be filming to... Um, maybe I've been kind of doing a mini mini vlogging series called the knit shift road trip and I should have some stuff for you guys from Texas Um, I don't know if I'll be able to upload it there but I'll do my best so let's get into the knitting shall we I have um, several things to share with you today talk of our knit along that's just kicked off August 1st I have a finished object to show you that I did not make I will explain in a minute And I have some works in progress to share with you. So let's get to it. First things first, I'm going to share with you the finished object that isn't mine. That isn't something I made. It's now my possession. So my lovely mom, Dorothy, who has been on the podcast before, told me she was making me something. And uh, she was knitting it when I saw them in May at our family reunion in Pennsylvania. And... She she knit on it, I don't know when, but I saw her, I feel like I saw her since May, and she was knitting on, oh, it might have been when we were FaceTiming, I think that's what it was, we were FaceTiming and she had to put it out of sight really quickly. So she really wanted to show me what it was ahead of time, and I, she, did, I, I don't know if mom, if you showed me, but you told me what it was after it was finished, and I couldn't wait to see it when it came in the mail. And she made me this gorgeous, gorgeous poncho. And I've never owned a poncho before. Actually, that's a lie. I think you might have crocheted me one, Mom, back in the day. But this is a knitted poncho made from knit pricks. Knit. I just said, well, you heard what I said. It's from Knit Picks Capretta yarn. I feel like I'm blushing now that I had a slip of the tongue. It's made from Knit Picks Capretta, and it's the colorway Platinum. Knit knit Picks Capretta. I can't say that word now. Capretta is a merino cashmere nylon fingering weight yarn, and it is super soft and lovely. And I'm not going to open it up in its entirety. It does have this diamond lace pattern around all four edges, and you can see it has these little eyelets. Um, kind of a gathered eyelet here. This is a modification from the original pattern. My mom made one of these for herself. It was a mystery knit along by Knit Pearl Hunter. And um, 
she made one for herself and made it to pattern, but she decided to not do the big open eyelet. She kind of did a gathered eyelet instead for mine, and I think it's so pretty. And you can see how lovely this stitch definition is on this diamond around the border. It's just exquisite, and it has a little seed stitch edding, edging so it stays flat. It's so beautiful, Mom, and then you do have to seam it. So I think from Ravelry, it looks like she used about 1,400 yards, which is about six balls. Um, it's just really, really pretty, Mom. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful gift, and I really have been trying to plan more for neutral knits, you know? I'm very attracted to the shiny, you know, the speckled, crazy, multicolored stuff, but I'm really trying to make myself some more neutral um, neckwear that I can wear with all of my dresses that I wear to work, which are generally, generally prints. And here's Gracie to say hello. I feel like my print dresses, I really like to have a very subtle um, shawl to wear with it. Grace, it's it's every week now. When I, I think when I'm talking to the camera, she thinks I'm talking to her. You gonna sit down too? I mean, she is my shadow dog. She follows me everywhere in the apartment, so... This is pretty much par for the course. She, If I'm sitting in my knitting chair over there, she is sitting next to me or behind me on the cushion. Where were we? Thank you, Mom, for this beautiful, beautiful poncho. And if I have my wits about me, I will insert a picture of my mom wearing it at this point. She did take a modeled photo. And I texted her a little selfie, but I think I was in my pajamas with the poncho over it, and I won't subject you guys to that. That is my finished object of the week even though it's totally not my finished object. And that brings us to works in progress. I have a little bit of progress on a sock I've been working on. This is for my dad for Christmas. I don't think my dad watches the podcast, but mom, make sure dad is not in the room. And it is my dad's Christmas socks. I was right about here last week, so I really have only knit about an inch or two. Um, this multicolored, starting with the red up, is the sock yarn I'm using. This is an online super sock in the forest line and the gray toe is opal sock yarn which I'm using for heel toes and cuffs on a ton of socks. So you can see it's red and black and white speckles and then it's brown and black. I didn't realize that the black had brown speckles in it but there is black. It does change to black and there's some brown in there. So and there is also I'm really excited to get to the red, yellow, and blue, so I think I'm going to call these my dad's Wonder Woman socks because I just, I think Wonder Woman when I see that red, I think I said red, white, and blue. I meant red, yellow, and blue. I do know my colors, guys. So um, this is a merino nylon, kind of a typical, well, hardy wearing German sock yarn, 75-25 um, merino nylon. I think it's about 460 yards. My dad wears a size 13 shoe and he does have, in addition to just having big feet, they're kind of big around. So I, this is a 72 stitch sock, which is four stitches, eight, four to eight stitches bigger than I normally knit. I normally knit my socks on a 64 or a 68 stitch count. This is a size one Chiagu needle, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. Chiaogus are my old tr trusty standbys. I cast on 36 stitches and then I increased every third round. Um, so I knit two plain rounds in between the increase rounds so that it had a nice big toe cup for my dad's feet. And I increased until I hit 72 and now I'm just going up the leg. I do think I'm going to do a fish lips kiss heel for my dad. I've never done one of those for him before. I always do a gusset and a heel flap but I think I'm gonna give it a go this time. So again, these are for my dad for Christmas and they will be slow going, but I will have them done by December. I, re I really love giving socks to people and I have so many pairs of my own now that I just would rather knit mostly, knit socks for others a lot. Um, so there are some skeins of yarn in my stash that I really wanna make for myself, but this um, knitting Christmas socks is one of my favorite things to do. I've been doing it almost a decade now so and I'm this project is living in a dumpling bag that I got at Knitting Addiction in the Outer Banks I don't know who made it and the person is unfortunately no longer making bags so bummer but I love this bag it's the perfect absolutely perfect sock bag next up is my cast on for the knit shift fall shawl knit along 
and this began August 1st and the goal is to knit a shawl by Halloween so you have three almost three months to do this it's totally doable um, no particular pattern no particular yarn no weight of yarn it's totally up to you the minimum for entry for prizes is about 400 350 to 400 yards like essentially a skein of sock yarn so that covers your little shawlette up to if you're making a giant pie shawl and the bigger the shawl the uh, the more yardage you use the more entries you get into um, a prize so it it behooves you I guess to knit a big shawl if you want more chances to win a prize um, no prizes to share yet I haven't really gotten my act together on that note but I have them in my office so I am knitting I'm trying to again keeping in mind the neutral theme that I mentioned earlier I am casting on I cast on a shawl from two skeins of ghost from hedgehog fibers and I know this isn't neutral, but I just think this is the perfect, it, to me it's a neutral, you know, it's kind of, it's a multicolored white and pale pink, and it is the same colorway, but this one, it has a lot more white than this one, so I am alternating every row, um, I should say every two rows, really, I'm alternating skein so that the, the color change isn't too obvious. And I'm knitting Line Break by Vera Valamaki, which is everything I wanted it to be. And this is where I am. Oh gosh, it looks so much bigger on screen than it does in real life. It looks more, I guess it looks more impressive on the computer screen. Um, but it's like, it's like a bib right now. I would say I have a bib, bib of a shawl. I know um, Candace from Pin Feathers and Pearls talks about when her shawl looks like a beard. So I would say I have achieved bib status right now. So you can see it is a crescent shaped shawl for now. Um, there are increases on um, either side of these stitch markers. Actually, it's just one side. Um, it's a paid for pattern, so I really can't give too much away, but it was a very easy start to this pattern. And I just finished this crescent part, and then I'm going to start, um, there's eyelets and more garter kind of alternating, and it becomes off center. Um, it becomes asymmetrical. So I'm really loving how this is working up. You can see that you, you can't even tell that these are two different skeins of yarn, you know, row by row. I think it looks really, really sharp. I'm really pleased with how this is knitting up and it's so, so soft. Hedgehog sock is just, it's just beyond squishy and scrumptious for a shawl. So I am thrilled about this. Um, let me see if I can show you, I can show you a picture of the, the pattern here. So that's what it looks like. It's, I mean, it doesn't really look asymmetrical there, but it definitely is. And it's got a nice lace, kind of a mesh lace here at the bottom edge. So it should be really cozy and lovely for fall. And my goal is to finish this before I go to SAF in Asheville, North Carolina in um, the end of October, which is right around the end of the knit along. So I feel pretty confident I can get that done. This project is living in my Nikozuki Knits project bag. Um, I just got this from her Etsy shop and I love it so much. It's the perfect shawl, shawl bag and I think it just coordinated, coordinates so well with the project that I'm knitting. So really, really pretty stuff. Um, I believe, I, I know she's in Canada now, but I think the bag maker spent time in Japan and some of her fabric comes from there. So I think this might be one of them, but her shop's lovely and it's got this great handle um handles on both sides really but this is the big one so i really like this bag quite a bit and it's lined and here is her logo right there so that is it for works in progress um i have been working on some secret knitting that i'm not ready to share yet but i will share it in due time just not right now let's see what else Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you guys about the fall shawl knit along. I was telling my boyfriend about it and he, sh he, I said, it's the fall shawl. It's a fall shawl knit along. And he said, it's the fall shawl y'all. So I feel like I'm going to have to call it that, especially when I'm knitting on it in Texas in a couple weeks. Um, it's the fall shawl y'all. So we have a chatter thread over in Ravelry. I will start an FO thread. Maybe I'll, I'll start it today. You know, it's been a week. Maybe someone, um, oh, and I, 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 all the details are in the Ravelry thread, 
but works in progress, if they're less than half done, feel free to submit them, you know, why not? Um, and we're using the hashtag TKS Fall Shawl um, in, on, on Instagram. So I think those are all the details for now, but Ravelry has the, the details in the chatter thread. So check out the Knit Shift group and um, you will be all filled in. So a little bit of future knitting to talk to you guys about. I was going through my stash as, as one does and these two colors jumped out at me and I just had to share them with you guys because I feel like they were made to go together. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is, it's coming out kind of blue, but it's this really stormy gray. This is Periwinkle Sheep, um, 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, and the colorway is Thunderstorm. And it's hand dyed in Albany, New York. And I'm wishing I could remember the name of the store where I bought this. It was a really lovely shop in New York, in the Albany area, I think. And they were just really lovely and had this gorgeous selection of this periwinkle sheep. And it's kind of hard to tell, but the twist on this sock yarn looks fantastic. It reminds me of a BFL base I've seen from from uh, Marigold Gen Yarns on Etsy. It's just a really, that's I have two strands of it here, but it's just a really tight twist, and I love that in a sock yarn. And this gorgeousness is Plymouth Happy Feet 100 Splash. And it's just a cream base with all these speckles of yellow and orange and blue and pink. And I really love all these black speckles here in brown. I just think you don't, you see some black speckles on yarn, but not usually to this concentration. So this is a commercial dyer, of course, Plymouth Yarn. They're one of the biggies. And I think it's interesting how a lot of commercial dyers have gotten more into speckles. You know, a lot of the independent dyers have been doing speckles for a while. And I think it's interesting how commercial dyers are getting into you know, what the market wants right now. Speckles are really popular, so this was Plymouth's, Plymouth's entry into it. This is a 9010 Superwash Merino Wool, 10% nylon, and it's 384 yards, so it's not quite as generous a yardage as most sock yarns, but that's okay. And I think the yardage on this, this is 460 yards on the Periwinkle Sheep. I kind of have an idea in mind for what I want to do with these, but I I don't want to talk about it yet in case I change my mind. So I just thought they were so flippin' gorgeous together that I just wanted to share them with you guys. I think this would make an awesome striped project. And that's it for the knitting content this week. So I'm going to talk a little bit about odds and ends. And I have some pattern ideas for you for the fall shawl knit along if you would like to join but maybe don't know what you want to knit. I, I was, um, I've been saving some patterns and I kind of like to share some stuff. I like to share stuff that I think is really pretty with you guys. So stay tuned for that. Our, our interns are leaving at work. I think I mentioned that I managed the two reporting interns in the newsroom this summer. So I had a busy week. We, I took each of them to lunch with a colleague and just, um, have been preparing for their send off. Um, we got them I, we got them gifts. I had the idea to, you know, we work in a newsroom where photographers make photos of what we cover. And so I, I had the photo director print photos for a photo for each of them um, from something they worked on. One of them is a photo from a homecoming. Um, if you remember a few weeks back, I got to attend a aircraft carrier homecoming and cover it for the paper tweeting and sharing photos and video. Um, one of the interns got to go and work on our Facebook Live coverage of the homecoming, which was hugely popular. At one point we had like four or 5,000 people watching it. And uh, I think in the end we had like 
500, 600,000 people watch it on a rewind. So it was really successful and she was able to go and help work on that Facebook Live with a photographer on staff. So I chose a photo for her of a reunion between family members at the homecoming. And for, for the other reporting intern, she was able to go up to Chincoteague, which is an island off the east coast of Virginia, right near the Virginia-Maryland line. And she was able to cover the Chincoteague Pony Swim. Um, if you've read the book Misty of Chincoteague, you'll be familiar that there are wild ponies there. Um, it, the ponies actually live on Assateague Island mostly, um, which is an island on the Maryland side. And what they do every summer at the end of July is they swim the ponies, um, the, the, the newer ponies, and swim them over to, um, to the uh, Chincoteague side. And they have to do it at just when the tide is right. Um, Basically, it's called slack tide, the, the tide, you know, there can't really be a current, you know, so that the ponies can just kind of easily move. And they auction off some ponies as a fundraiser for the local fire department, which is a volunteer fire department. And they, um, it helps fund the care of the ponies. It helps thin the herd, you know, prevents genetic inbreeding, that kind of thing. So we sent a reporter and a photographer to that, um, and the they were both the photography intern and the, one of the reporting interns. So they were there really, really early in the morning, and she came back and said, oh, that was so cool. I didn't really know about it. And, um, you know, it's hugely popular. People come from all over to see the ponies. I mean, there were people there from Rhode Island, and people come every year. It's a huge deal. So. I printed, I had a photo printed for her of the ponies emerging from the water. And I don't think I can legally put a photo in here because it is a photo that belongs to my employer, but I will link to the photos, and, uh, both the photos I'm talking about here. I'll link to them in the show notes if you'd like to see. But the photo of the horses, they're kind of coming out of the water and it almost seems otherworldly, you know? It's just their heads are starting, you know, they're, they're just gradually coming out and it looks like it almost just looks kind of mystical, you know, it was, I'm sure it was really muggy and the sky wasn't super blue, it was a little bit overcast and I just thought it was such a beautiful photo. So printed those off, framed them, matted them and those are their farewell gifts and their last day of work is next Friday. So I will be giving them to those ladies then. And in other news, my boss is leaving. So I have lunch plans with her this week. I have plans to see a friend. I'm getting a haircut. So it's just gonna be a little bit of a busy week preparing for my trip to Texas in a couple weeks. But that's okay, I'm really excited about it. Um, my boyfriend's been working really hard at school and this was the end of the summer semester and he's done with exams. We slept in today. He normally gets up at 5 a.m. to work and study before class and he slept in till almost nine today which you know good for him it's, he's been working like bonkers lately what else what else i guess that brings me to discussing some pattern recommendations that caught my eye in ravelry lately let me pull up my ipad here so i had two patterns i wanted to share with you today one of them is a two color shawl this is a pattern by janina calio it's called seagrass and if you have been watching the podcast for a little while, you'll remember that we had a knit along for another Janina Calio pattern called Antarctis. And this, she does a lot of beautiful shawl designs. And this is a pattern called Seagrass. And it's, you can see it's a two color shawl. There's some striping, there's some, um, I believe lace. Yeah, there's some lace in each color and there's some garter. So it's got a little, ooh, it's got a little bit of everything for whatever strikes your fancy. So I just thought that was really exquisite. Look at that gorgeous lace there. I'm sorry, you're getting some camera reflection there, but I just thought that was gorgeous. And those colors totally say seagrass to me. Um, it is a paid for pattern. And right now, Janina Calio has a sale going on in her pattern shop. If you buy two patterns, you get the third free. This lasts until August 14th. And um, it's about, it's a, almost a six euro pattern, which means it's almost $7. So if you spend $14, you'll get three gorgeous shawl designs from her. So definitely check out her pattern page. I will link to it in the show notes. Um, she, she just comes up with beautiful, mostly asymmetrical shawl designs. So she's definitely worth checking out. The other pattern I wanted to share with you is another shawl pattern. 
This is Bella Luna by Diana Rosenstein, or Rosenstein, I'm not sure. And it's a crescent-shaped shawl, and I just think it is so exquisite. Look at how, look at how much extra wingspan there is. Like, how cozy would it be to wrap up in that? As you can see, it's a single color shawl, and it calls for about six, I think about 700 yards of fingering weight yarn. And you can see there's this really open lace at the bottom, but it looks super simple. And I'm, I'm going to pull up the close-up of the actual body of the shawl. It's mostly garter with a slip stitch um, in the middle. And I just think this would be a perfect first shawl if you're new to knitting shawls. I think this would be a really easy gateway shawl if you have two skeins of the same colored sock yarn or even if you wanted to do two colors it's totally up to you it's your shawl do what you want I just think this is really gorgeous and again it's Bella Luna by Diana Rosenstein and it is a five dollar pattern and she's actually they're offering kits through an Etsy shop now that I look closer at this pattern page um, the Etsy shop Spark Story is offering kits, and the kits with the yarn give you the pattern included. So let me pull up her Etsy shop, and we'll, we can take a look. Oh, you know what? The kits are dyed to order, so they're not straight listings in her shop, but she has listings for singles, MCN, 100% merino, silk merino, that kind of stuff. But it's a lovely Etsy shop, actually, now that I look at it. Like, look at this, some of these colors. Oh, gorgeous! So those were some patterns I thought I would share with you guys today. And last but not least, I was I realized we have not done a lipstick of the week in a very long time. And for that, I apologize. I know some of you like when I talk about my lipstick and just tell you guys what I'm wearing. So today I am wearing Revlon Cherries in the Snow. This is a night, I want to say it's from the 50s. Um, they've, I don't know if they've done it continuously since then or if it's just a they're kind of bringing it back around again but it's a very classic pinky red so I will come in here for a closer look there you have it it's a great great lipstick classic color um, can't go wrong in my opinion with that I think we are at the end of today's episode it's a little shorter than normal but um, you guys know I tend to keep my episodes on the short side anyway so hopefully you won't mind till next time happy knitting and I'll see you soon Bye!